<clears throat> hey guys, welcome to the Three Eye Three Guy podcast. You know, three eyes, three guys monetized, not yet monetized. Once again, one day. <laughs> once again, one day. One day we're gonna be like three guys, three eyes, really one monetized. Day. Really monetized. We're gonna be like having stacked the cash behind us. I really have no like idea of why we're not monetized. Like. <laughs> oh, I should have made a joint. Like, I really don't get it. <laughs> Dude, why? Are, I I can't I can't smoke inside. Otherwise, my roommate's gonna like stab me in the neck. So. Dude, so far I love the packs so much. Straight, I figured out how to work it. Really? Oh yeah. Dude, Don, you didn't see it. Like when we when Don Michael like pull out the packs, he has like the thing now where you can connect to his phone and like do a bunch of weird shit. Oh, you get the party games and stuff. I got yeah, I got the party games and little heat settings and. I'm gonna make edibles pretty soon. Did you play around with the heat settings to find one that you like, or are you sticking with? Yeah, we found one. We, yeah, we stick to the low settings because one, the high setting is 420, which is what we had it at, and it was it was way too harsh. You know what we can talk about is this podcast. All three of us are from Illinois, and on January 1st, we became recreationally legalized. So that's pretty fucking cool. All right, Even so what, what, is, what has changed since, since this legalization? What has happened? Nothing. And people Nothing has still changed. buy street weed because it's too expensive. So thank you, Illinois. Literally, I don't think anything's happening. Because I went downtown, like, the day after. Maybe, like, not New Year's Day, but, like, maybe, like, the second or whatever. And I didn't smell any weed downtown. Like, it was really weird. Like, I thought California, I thought they were smoking the streets and shit. Cal- like, Chicago, like, it literally was just, like, a normalized day. Like I didn't. What did you expect though? Like, did you expect like everybody to like be like holding hands and maybe the like people are saying... crazy though outside of the dispensaries and stuff. Like the lines are down the fucking street still. Yeah, I, I was telling Troy this. I was like, if you're if you're like one of the first people online, you're kind of a cornball. <laughs> the, the taxes are just ridiculous. Cause what I thought is I thought they were gonna have a set tax rate at 25 percent, but what they mm-hmm. did. Is they're taxing you on how much THC is in, in the uh, thing. I think the cap is 35. Damn, I didn't know that. Really? What? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I, I know. I know why it's exp- I know it's expensive because they double tax it. So it's like the sales tax and like federal tax. Like so you get mm-hmm. like double tax. So like. Well yeah, that's the 35. That cap is just one of the taxes. There is multiple taxes on there, so it is super expensive. So that's why people are still buying street weed. But There's Illinois a, announces nearly 11 million worth of recreational cannabis sold in the first five days. Which Second comes out million. to, you said 11 million? Mm-hmm. Um, what is, so I think that's like 2 million in Texas. It's fucking like like nutty. 271,000 transactions made in five days. Beautiful. And that should I'm looking at this app right now, actually, called Weed Maps. I think it just shows you, like, the menus. The Weed Maps is all over. The CI has a pretty nice try fucking it. menu. The Weed Maps, literally, I get all the ads for it, and I don't know why. Like, I don't, like, I don't even look any up any dispensers, and Weed Maps, like, all over my fucking ads. Makes no sense. Makes But nothing, nothing changed, really, because, what is it? Like, you can, now, but you can smoke at your house. Like on your front, as long as it's your property, you can smoke on your front lawn, your backyard, your roof. Like you can smoke anywhere, but like you can't go to parks. Parks are still off limits. You can't go. You still can't go to a lot of places. Like you can't just be walking down the sidewalk with a joint. They can still like fine you, but I don't think they really enforce that. They might just tell you to put it out. But no, mm-hmm. definitely in like my small town where weed's not like a big thing, even though everybody's smoking weed, but like we don't talk about. It. Um, you'd definitely get in trouble if you were like walking down the street smoking a joint. Like, I definitely would get my ass beat by a cop. I can see that in small town. Hmm. But I smoked one out on my roof the other day, and that was that was nice. Just knowing that like I can't get in trouble, like so nice. It feels different. Yeah, I feel like I feel like our people, like our our kids, will never understand like what it's like when we're in high school, bro, with like, you had like two grams in your pocket, bro. Like you're like risking going to fucking juvie, bro. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like there's, 
there is a, like a high chance, bro. If you drop an eighth on the ground, like you're gonna go to jail. <laughs> like that's ridiculous. Bro. Yeah, it's, it's gonna so be like crazy to boomer see talk. Shit. Boomer talk. Boomer talk. Yeah. Wait, instead it's of boomer. Crazy to see that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. It's crazy to see the shift from when we were like in junior high or high school, well, probably high school. I wasn't smoking junior high, but high school, like from freshman sophomore year, where like you take weed and you'd go out into the fucking woods where nobody could find you, and then you smoke a joint, and then like to go back and pretend not to be high around your parents, to being in 2020 and being 21 and being able to just smoke wherever I want, whenever I want, as long as it's like my property. Like, so different. Blows my mind that we've gotten to this point. And our generation got to see like the whole fucking thing change. That's that's so cool. Crazy is how our generation is also seeing the transition in psychedelics because we're seeing Colorado legalize mushrooms. So like, how long is that going to take until it's federally legal? Dude, Just probably to do the drugs. I would say like ten years. No, maybe fifteen. I'm, I'm thinking I, I, like also. I'm I'm gonna push it fifteen. No, this was what I'm saying about about the shroom thing. This the only thing is it'll never ever ever be recreationally legal. Like then you're never gonna be able to go to the store and you're like a fucking twenty year old, twenty year old, twenty one year old, and you can just buy a fucking twenty grams of shrooms. You know, they're never gonna do that. It just, no, it's I, I, doubt, I doubt rec legal. So I don't know about it. that because never. look at all like the tech nerds in Silicon Valley. Yeah, they're microdosing and coming dude, up. Dude, yeah, the these business like, dudes literally out. just microdose every other day. And apparently it's really good for you. I don't know. I don't microdose know if shrooms helps with cluster headaches, addiction, and some other things. Google it. The good for you. Nope, I definitely think that, like, because the only reason I think the shrooms are they're, they're trying to do it in therapy settings. Like, so, like, you're in a therapy session. They make you think like maybe less than a gram or something, and it just opens up your mind to talk about certain things more, I think. And it's just in a controlled environment. I think that's really what they're trying to do. They're not trying to do anything else. There Rec- was a uh, study done where they would give the patient, like in a therapy setting, right, controlled environment, controlled set and setting, everything. So they'd give the patient mushrooms, and then they'd put uh, an eye mask on them and just let them kind of lean back and either talk about stuff or not talk about stuff. And if they want to get up and walk around and look at the art in the room, they can. But, like, that's kind of cool how they're doing that in therapy sessions to kind of test it out. That's what kind of art? The art that melts your mind, apparently. I don't know. Well, I, w- I would like no. to say that with people that don't understand, like, anything about psychedelics, like, psychedelics are pretty much, like, these kind of, like, chemicals, like, they're all, like, I mean, they're all different, there's different kinds, like, psilocybin is, like, back to the compound of thin mushrooms, and, like, LSD, like, the fucking molecules complicated, I'm not even gonna try to think, but, like, it's, like, lysergic, some, now, whatever. Right. That's a little methyl name. Yeah, whatever the fuck sounds- but, but it's not, that, that, the fucking chemical name is not important, but, like, it pretty much is, like, uh, it, it, can, it can be used as tools to, like, open up your, like, mind more, like in other levels that you can't even like, imagine it to, because like people like I don't know how to kind of explain it. The like when you like take a psychedelic, your brain starts talking to other parts of your brain that you normally doesn't communicate to. So like say for instance like I don't know the names, but say like for this side, like your left hemisphere of your brain you normally talks to like a certain part of the right hemisphere. Like the psychedelic makes them communicate with each other. And that's how, like, you get a lot of, like, profound thoughts and shit that you've never even, like, thought before. They just come spilling out because, like, your brain is just, like, doing all this stuff and more activity than it's ever done. And it, like, it can just help with, like, becoming a tool and it's just, like, bringing things out that you don't even know were there. Which, with these parts of your brain talking, a lot of people, like, okay, since these parts of your brain don't usually talk to each other, right? What needs to happen is sober self-reflection. So a lot of people do these as party drugs, which is it's not really unsafe, but like these drugs are a special tool that humans have, right? And if you're doing these all the time, you don't get as much out of them as if you're doing them sparsely when you need them as a tool. So like if you're not having that time to self-reflect soberly, like 
you're not getting as much out of them as you could. You're just doing them to see the ground breathe. Like you do see some crazy stuff on them, which is cool. But like what you use these tools for is more for like deeper self reflection and self awareness, things like that. And a lot of people don't do that. They just do them as party drugs, which I wouldn't recommend because you're not getting out of them, especially yeah, deep things like deep thinkers. If you do drugs, um, <laughs> so say you've been really struggling with like envy or jealousy, like say you are always constantly scrolling on Instagram. Right? And I think loneliness would be a good example. Loneliness? Yeah. Or no, you don't think so? No, I, I'm just trying to bring this point back around to. Uh, oh. to are you saying loneliness and envy tied together? Um, no, they're just both negative negative feelings. Okay, any yeah. negative feeling like that, loneliness or envy or greed or things like that, those are things that like when you do these drugs, hopefully you reflect on and you try to figure out maybe different ways that you haven't thought of before on how to fix these about yourself. And mm -hmm. after like after you have these realizations, it may take months to really kind of set in your brain of what needs to change, like what you need to stop doing, what you need to keep doing to be a better mm -hmm. person. And if you keep doing these drugs, like every once in a while, you're not getting that sober self-reflection to really kind of create a new habit of being a better person. You're kind of muddying the water of how your brain thinks. Because if you're always, what these drugs do is they kind of turn your brain to mush, right? Which sounds terrible, but like it's really beautiful in how it works. But if you're always turning your brain to mush, you're never going to be solid. You're, you're just going to be mashed potatoes. Like you don't want to be mashed potatoes. You want to be a solid little rock. And if you don't give yourself the time to breathe after these drugs, because they do take a lot of out of you, like you need that time to breathe. And all I'm trying to say is don't do them as party drugs. Use them as a tool. Back to my point. There is a man named Terrence McKenna who is like mm -hmm. uh, basically the guru of all these drugs, right? And even him, the man who's been doing these drugs for years, years, doesn't do them more than two to three times a year. And just like within most realms of anything, say like I'm into powerlifting, do I warm up with anything but the bar? No, because I'm not better than the best. So like nothing makes you more special than the next person when it comes to these drugs. Like you're not getting anything more out of them by doing them every like few weeks. You're just melting your fucking brain. If like, anything, you're getting less. Yeah, you're getting way less. You're not getting that whole introspection of like, what did this do? What did this tell me? What did I see? How do I feel? Like there's so many questions after you do them, especially when you start bumping up the numbers. Like say you start at 100 UG LSD and you bump up to 200 and 300, and then like you don't get the same, uh, you don't get the same thought process. Like you you get oh that was fun, but you don't get like oh damn hey I'm a shitty person. Like I just realized that. Like those those things go unnoticed when you're not doing them in a smart way. It sounds also it when it sounds comes, depressing too. When you're doing them a lot or just doing them yeah. in general. A lot. Well, yeah, when it's a lot. Because it it seems like you're searching for something, but like you, you don't you don't find those things by doing a bunch of drugs. You don't you don't do that. You find them by doing them every once in a while. So, talking milk. Yeah. So to to continue like my uh like what we know we do have like a I wouldn't even call her a friend. She's just like a, someone we know. <laughs> someone we know like someone we met. Someone we yeah, met. Someone we, met. we we like we hung out with her a few times like and um. She she like I I'm trying to fucking make how it makes sense. I'll just cut that off. Um, so we met this. So we like we're like hanging out with this like girl. She she like does psychedelics like often. Like that's what she told us. She's had a few experiences, like all like positive at least from what I've known. And she's like she has like a case of almost talking about people like just take a bunch of stuff and just kind of like search around for they don't even know what. Like, she had this one night where, like, we found out about this because, like, our other friend told us about this, and she also explained it to her. Um, she literally, like, started off, like, a normal night. She was going to, like, trip or whatever and take, like, say, like, 200, 300, like, micrograms, which is, like, which is, like, a, like a pretty hefty dose. Like, I mean, it's, like, it's, like, pretty strong. Like, 300 micrograms of LSD is pretty, pretty intense. And then um, so she's starting off, she's starting wow. off, 
she's starting off with like already a tent like it just rides out for like eight hours or so and then like it, that's how it's just the end of the trip but instead of like her riding her trip out like a normal person like hours into the trip she started taking more and more tabs so like say like three hours in she started she took another tab then like four hours she took another tab and then like she literally like spiraled out of control to the point of her like just searching for i don't know what she just didn't want the feeling to go away that like she literally end up, ended up like tripping for several days just because of like the effects never went away. Like she literally had to go to the doctor. And she went to a mental hospital. She literally mm-hmm. went, to the, she went to a doctor just because of like her like taking way too much and like literally like for no reason. Like it's, they're not something you should play around with, but like in a safe like setting and like with the right people, those kind of things will never like never happen. Like you have to know like what you're getting into like these things have amazing positive potentials but they also have equally negative like potentials as well as everything does so mm-hmm. like what do like michael wants to like start well, we, we have like a spring break trick coming up and michael wants to like like try something like a beginner thing why do you want to why do you want to like get into it or like what is your goal or what do you want um i guess to have a new experience number one and then i don't know i want to be more open i want i want to be more open and i want to understand my thoughts more and the reasons why i feel the way cer- the reasons why i feel certain like emotions about certain things so i think that would help um and yeah um yeah, I think that's I the main reason why. Be super intentional and maybe, like, I've heard people that write down their stuff, like what they're trying to figure out, like they write down some things that they're trying to maybe work on. So, I maybe like telling people. Yeah. But I would also be afraid of, like, manifesting those negative thoughts. So, I don't know. See, way, ways to uh, prevent manifesting negative thoughts is really uh, all about your set and setting, right? So it sounds super stupid because it's so simple, but like being around good company in places that you know well, if you're going to do enough to like get these realizations, like a lot of people can take a little bit and just go like, I've gone to Walmart, but like a lot of people kind of forget that first step and their whole trip goes sideways because they didn't start off in the right place like not even mentally but like physically like they were in a bad place around people they didn't know things like that they all have an effect on how your trip is going to go so like set and setting super big key and correct dosage correct dosage is also good and test your drugs don't be taking stuff you don't know if it's going to work. So. Definitely. Th- yeah, no, definitely. That's advice to everyone watching, dude. Always test. Use a testing kit. Mm-hmm. No, definitely, oh, like, our link. Like, I'm going to order, like, a lot of them. You ever it's, see that Psych Substance episode? Literally, where, if you if talk about how... Wait, no, you go. <laughs> I was just going off the testing kit thing and how... I was watching an episode of Psych Substance where he was at a he was at a music festival in Canada, and he was interviewing the people running the fest, and he was like at the drug or medical tent basically, mm-hmm. and they had a program where you could go and anonymously like test your drugs to see if everything you have was clean, and they were just saying like yeah like this is. There was a shit ton of like stuff that like would have killed people if they'd never tested it. Yeah, so test your stuff. If you don't test your stuff, you're stupid because it's literally like twelve dollars for a lot worth of like like multiple times of testing. Twelve dollars. Yeah. It's called Ehrlich Lusty on Amazon and it's and, yeah. dollars. If you don't test your shit, you're stupid. And if you don't have twelve dollars to spare, then you have bigger issues. <laughs> yeah, but if 
also there's a lot of things that like people could sell you that could actually fuck you up like there's a chemical called N N bomb that people put on blotter paper that could like actually ruin you so be sure to be safe about the stuff you're taking thank you but i was just definitely talking about like like when it comes to like having like it sounds really like stupid but like like when it comes to like not having like a bad trip like you have to be like almost accepting of that being a possibility. Like, you have to, like, go into yeah. it knowing that if I'm going to have a bad trip, I'm just going to have one. Like, it's like you, like, you obviously don't want one, like, but, like, you and your head thinking, I don't want a bad trip, I don't want a bad trip, is making it worse. Like, it's making, mm -hmm. like, your eyes of everyone, like, way better. I feel like you just accepting the experience and, like, letting go and just feeling whatever you're, like, truly feeling is what's going to help you the most. Because even, even with Dom, like, he's actually had, like, a bad, a pretty bad trip, like, what he's told me. And, like, it, obviously in the moment, it's fucking terrifying and probably horrible. But, like, yeah. looking back on it, he's probably so glad, like, it happened. I am. I learned a lot. Yeah. I, I mean. I learned the don't way do I drugs in the back of some kids that you don't know. <laughs> and don't go home, like, to your house when your parents have five guests over. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> don't. This sounds horrible. Don't. That's horrible. It was horrible, dude. I experienced something called ego death for the first time, and it wasn't like I really knew what it was because I researched it a lot more after. I thought I knew what it was, but I didn't. So I got stuck in the first stage of ego death or the second or whatever, and then, like, I couldn't get out of it, and that's fucking terrifying. Mm -hmm. So you basically lose all sense of yourself, and you think nothing matters, and you think you don't matter, and it's fucking terrifying unless you let go and you realize that the fact that nothing matters means everything you do matters. Because if nothing matters, that's all. What's... Nothing matters. <laughs> Wait. Um, can that's you go fun. back and explain it for people? Because I've I've heard a term before, but I never knew what it meant. Okay. There, there are multiple stages to what is known as ego death. Your ego is your sense of self what you view yourself as and who you are that is your ego and ego death is the whole collapse of all of that so your entire sense of self your self value all of it just crumbles in front of you and if you if you like realize okay this is this is what happens when you take a lot of drugs okay and be smart about it and you just kind of let it happen usually people go to a sense of like zen like they kind of are like okay this is this realization means, like, this is good. This is good. This means you're in a good place. But if you can't get to that stage and you get stuck in that second stage, you basically get stuck in this uh, loop. Because this, uh, th this is, like, a common thing among psychedelics to get stuck in thought loops, and they just keep running, like, a tape that's stuck on rewind. So, like, if you get stuck in that stage, it's um, quite damaging to your brain. So, like... I'm not saying it's going to ruin your the rest of your life, but I definitely was fucked up for, like, a couple months. Like, I definitely felt like shit just because of it. And that was, that was me being unprepared for a whole trip. I The whole trip, I it was it was all on me. Like, I was unprepared for it. I wasn't. I didn't do them smart. Like, I was walking down the street, and I was like, I was going to go to the park that day, and I was just going to chill. I had my whole day planned out, but then it started to rain. And then I took the drugs while I was walking down the street. And then a friend asked me to get in the back of his car. It was a new car, so I've never been in this car. So that's a really <laughs> bad setting. We're driving around. And then beginning of the trip, when the come up starts, he, ta he starts talking to me about harp. Which harp is a, apparently, allegedly, allegedly. is a government program that controls the weather. So oh, he, yeah. he's freaking me out a little bit, right? He's freaking me out. So I asked to go home. I get in my house and I'm already tweaking my, my my pupils are huge already. I'm laying down in bed and I hear so many voices downstairs and I text my dad and I'm like, Dad, do we have guests over? Because apparently people were visiting my mom from Minnesota and they came a day early. I didn't know this. So I'm sitting up in my room tripping on 200 UG of LSD and... Uh, I start hearing voices. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I go downstairs. I, I te First, I text my friend. I'm like, hey, man, you got to come pick me up. Like, I, I'm tweaking out. Like, can you trip sit me? I'm sorry to put this on you. But like, hey, man, can you get me out of this house? Like, just help me out a bit. So he comes and picks me up. And I walk downstairs. And literally, 
all eyes on me. There's fucking seven people staring at me, all full-grown adults, while my eyes are just huge. I look at my dogs. I have two Great Danes, right? They look like giant hellhounds to me right now. Like, they're on fire. Their fucking eyes are, like, glowing red. All these adults are staring at me, talking to me. I'm like, bye. I gotta go. And then I walk out the door, and literally the whole night was just me kind of freaking out. And I got to the point where I got to a friend's house, and I was sitting downstairs, and that's when I experienced ego death, when I was sitting doing nothing. Like, when I got stuck in that thought loop. So it, it was really just bad set and setting. It was not smart on my part. But I yeah. did learn a lot, like what not to do. And I learned nothing matters. So, yeah. No, I was definitely just saying, like... But if, if you're... Oh. What? You go. Oh. I was saying, uh, Don's, like, uh, definition of you that was pretty accurate, like, to... I just Googled it just to, like, see. But, like... Like you needed, if someone needed a dictionary def, definition, <clears throat> ego death is a complete loss of s- subject self identity. So like everything, like like don't say everything you believe in is like kind of lost. You kind of like forget like everything that you know. This is the term is used in various intertwined contexts with related meanings in like psycho, um, psychology and like like it almost feels like you're physically dying and you have to kind of accept. It. It's kind of weird. It's like it's, it's pretty intense. Like. I couldn't, I've never dealt, dealt with something like that, but pretty much, like, the, the moral of the story is definitely to, it helps definitely, like, if you, say, for instance, like, for, say, like, it helps a lot for new beginners to have a trip sitter, like, someone that you know, like, say, for, like, for instance, someone like, like, your girlfriend or your best friend that's not under the influence, it helps for them to be there, just so you know, like, you have a sober mind next to you, just mm-hmm. to know that that can make you grounded. Like that would that that helps a lot of people. My first trip, like like I just took a tab and sat in my dorm room alone and stared at the wall. So like I didn't have a trip sitter, but a lot of people like find more comfort in having a trip sitter. Just because having someone like a sober mind next to you, like a clear head definitely helps. Dalton for I, uh, I like I like how you you feel grounded. That's that's definitely a word. Yeah. That experience that you had, um is it something that never like came away like that something that never left you i guess okay i i did think of a word to describe this but what no, has not gone away yes i understand i am special in some ways but like i do understand that nothing really matters now but in, if i could put it into one word i'd say humbling because oh. at 19, you think you're hot shit. You think you fucking know everything. But then when you watch, like, your sense of self fucking dissolve, like, humbling is the word. And I would I would say it's probably beneficial to have an ego death experience at some point. Like, I imagine most people who are into psychedelics will experience that moment at some point through their career of self-exploration. Like, it's bound to happen. Honestly, like... You, you can't get into this and not expect a bad trip. Like, it, it's bound to happen at some point in your life. I was lucky enough to let it happen at a younger age. So hopefully it doesn't happen again. So I know what not to do. I had that realization at 19. And it, it's definitely, it aligns with my philosophy with most things in life. So, like, I, I it helped change a lot of views into a more lenient, like, carefree kind of, manner I, I guess it shifted things mm-hmm. no I, I i agree i feel like when you're like i've had similar experiences like with psychedelics too like not having like i haven't had like a, a bad time but i have realized like yeah. from like sitting there like sitting in my room for like fucking several hours like you know my first trip i was thinking about a lot of stuff and like it definitely did realize like it did click in my head like how much bigger like everything is than you and it kind of does make you feel like because like at that age like a younger age you definitely feel like almost like invincible or you feel like you're like i don't say like hot shit like you feel like you're like so much special than other people or so much special than like everything around you but that like, eventually you like will hopefully some people never realize it but hopefully you'll eventually realize that like you're not any different than other people you're not like you're not some standout fucking special starfish you're, like just like everyone else so like 
like people fucking like have a hard time grasping that i feel like but i feel like for certain concepts i feel like this could definitely help Mm -hmm. we can we can wrap it up we can i feel like we talked like the good amount about a stretch of psychedelic knowledge for beginners if you guys want to hear about psychedelics again we could go days but closing thought for me once you realize that when you die, you become the same dirt you walk on, be humble. Goodbye. Be humble. <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, sign like up my... for our Patreon. Um, there's exclusive content on there. Um, <laughs> so ass. Yeah. I, have, I, have one, I, I have one psychedelic quote that I go by Jimi Hendrix all the time really quickly. He says, Sometimes you have to uh, uh that I'm gonna just read it because I don't know why I'm gonna fucking say it without reading it. I have, I have, I have written hundred percent of shots you don't take. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy Hendrix says, like I, I wrote this down my first trip. This this note is probably like two years old. This says Jimi Hendrix said, Sometimes you have to use a little bit of fantasy to show different sides of reality. So yep. Definitely using these kind of things, you might think it's all made up and a bunch of fantasy things, but sometimes using that little bit of imagination or a little bit of stretch of weirdness can help you see what's like actually real. So, yeah. All right. I like it. Three guys, three guys signing out. All right, Pat, you through.